Pablo Palmer. Hi. Welcome to my Realtor Spotlight. Thanks Glad for to having have you me. On today. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> um, I obviously know you since our days in Blacksburg and yes. uh, Virginia Tech, but I want to help everybody else in the world get to know you a little bit better today. Thank you. Um, you and I have had the pleasure of working together and um, you know, you're know you very successful. You've had a very successful real estate career. I just wanted to dive into that a little deeper and understand how did you get into real estate? So I have always been interested in real estate. I actually, I don't know if you know this, but I minored in real estate in college at Tech. I did not know that. Yeah, they had like the year that I was a senior, they added the real estate minor. Wow. Um, so I didn't want to graduate early. So I added that on. Um, <laughs> but I was always interested in real estate in general because I always knew that I needed to like have my own, like be my own boss and have my own business in some capacity. And so I kind of tied together, like, what can I do? What business can I start that's going to be profitable, but that I also enjoy? So my dad does commercial real estate and my mom is an architect. So I've always had that kind of like eye for design and, you know, interested in what the market is doing. Like, that's just always been like conversation in my house. Um, so but when I graduated, it was like the market crash. So yeah. I wasn't, I actually got my license when I graduated. And then it was like, mm, this is probably not the best thing to do right out of school. You took so, the test that after you, know, I you did. got licensed yeah. right away. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cause the minor qualified you to take the test. Like if you got the minor, then that was like your credits that you needed to, to sit for the test. So I had my license in 2006. Um, but then the market crashed, so I didn't do anything with it. I did something totally different, but it always was in the back of my mind. Like I always wanted to get back into it. Um, so in 2011, I think I connected with, um, a girl who's my age, who's also an agent and her mom was like a big, um, like high volume agent in Reston, um, who I had known growing up in Reston. And she mentioned to me that her mom was looking for a transaction coordinator. Um, so I was like, great, that sounds perfect because it's, you know, salaried with benefits still. Cause that's obviously the big thing that you're worried about when you make the jump into real estate is like, yeah. you have no income. Yeah. Yeah. So I could kind of see the good, bad, and the ugly while I was still, getting in a steady income and had health insurance and all of that um, and learned from someone who really um, clearly had it down. Like she'd been doing it at that point, 25 years and was really rolling with it. So I took the leap um, and I was her transaction coordinator for over a little over a year and I loved it. So it kind awesome. of solidified for me that it's what I wanted to do, despite the bad and the ugly. I loved all parts of it. So I took the that's test a, again. That's a great way to get a lot of experience without yes. having all the, the risk of yes. uh, being being on your own. So that's awesome. It was, yes, it was so lucky. It was probably unique to how a lot of people do it. But if you're able to do it that way, that, I mean, I felt like I had a huge leg up when I stepped out on my own because I already had kind of like a mentorship basically for a year prior to that. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I took the test again and um, decided to go out on my own. And that was almost 10 years ago now. So did you, did your license expire? You had to retake it? Yes, because okay. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing with between like 2006 and 2011. And I didn't, yeah, I just didn't, didn't take like the yeah. continuing ed credits and all of that. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's a great story. I, I've had a similar experience being on somebody's team and learning from a mentor. And it's, it's, yeah. uh, I, I highly recommend it as well. Yes. Such a good way. Um, so now that, now that you go off on your own and you have all the success by yourself, what's your favorite thing about being a realtor? Yeah. Enjoy? I would say um, it sounds sort of corny, but like being in charge of my own destiny, you know, like the, what I put in, is exactly what I get out of it. And I feel like there's very few jobs that give you that direct correlation that you can see on almost a day-to-day -day basis. Like I know what I'm doing today. I'm going to see, like, if I do nothing today, then I'm going to have nothing to show for it in three months. But if I, 
you know, work really hard today, then I'm going to have things to show for it a couple months down the road. So just being able to kind of scale that and craft it how I want to, and then also make changes as I see necessary to serve my clients better. You know, like if there's something that I feel like needs to be tweaked or changed or adjusted, I can do that right away. It doesn't have to go through all of like the hoops and approvals and, you know, sign offs and stuff. Like I can just change it. Like if I feel like there's something that's going to work better for my clients or work better for my business, I just go ahead and change it. Um, So that, you know, there's a ton of things that I love, but that I would say is like my favorite and kind of like my why is just like being in charge of the whole thing and getting to see like the fruits of your labor and how the changes that you make do better your clients and you know you can um really play it how you want it yeah that's awesome yeah it's a constantly changing flexibility of you know is this what if i tweak this will it make a little better you know Mm -hmm. yeah do that so yeah exactly that's That's the fun part i think awesome Mm -hmm. awesome well uh, we know that there's a lot of real estate agents in our market. Uh, what makes you different than everybody else? Mm-hmm. So I would say kind of first and foremost, it's my level of organization, which sounds sort of basic, but this like transactions have so many moving parts. And if you are not on top of each moving part and keeping track of all the balls that are in the air, something's going to go wrong. Things are going to fall through the cracks. Your clients aren't going to be happy. It could be a bunch of little things or it could be a big thing. So one of the first things that I realized early on that I needed to do was put like systems into place. So I have like systems on systems on systems where Yes, exactly. And like (laughs) spreadsheets and all the stuff so that my clients always know exactly what's going on, exactly what to expect next, exactly where we're at in the process. And I also look at things like as a consumer myself, like if I'm buying a house, how do I want to see things play out? And like, it's a stressful time, right? And so I think the more communication and the more information that you have, the less it takes some of the stress away, because as long as you know what's coming down the pike and you can kind of mentally prepare for stuff, then there's less surprises and there's less to worry about. It's like, okay, now we're here and now I know we need to go here. And so that's also one of the biggest, um, one of the most common sort of feedbacks that I get from my clients is we we loved how well things were, just how smoothly things, the process went, you know, like never, yeah, like we never had to you know, worry about, do we need to do this? Do we need to do that? What's happening next? It was just sort of all there in front of them. Um, So that, and, you know, everyone does things differently, but I've found that to be incredibly effective for my business and something that I think not everyone maybe has mastered. So I feel like that's kind of something that sets me apart that clients really appreciate. Yeah, it's funny how you say organization and you're like, well, it sounds pretty simple, but you'd be surprised about who's not so organized. Out there. Yes, there's just so <laughs> much to organize. Like yep. you don't even know what you need to know to organize when you first start out. So yeah, just putting the systems into place was like a game changer. Awesome, awesome. So for our first time home buyers out there, is there one thing that you would advise them to do if you could just give them one piece of advice as they're entering this, this market that we're in? Yes. So always, obviously, talk to a lender first, Um, but especially in this market, because interest rates are going up and or changing, fluctuating even day to day. Like I just had clients who a year ago were looking up to a certain price point and they contacted me maybe two weeks ago and still wanted to be at the same price point. And I said, you got to check with your lender. Cause I don't know if that was your max price point. I don't know that it's going to be the case anymore. And sure enough, it wasn't, um, you know, and no big deal. We can work out solutions and all of that, but you have to get the financial piece. You have to be aware of the financial piece before you do anything. You can browse on, you know, Zillow and Redfin and all of that all day, 
But once you're ready to actually buy a house, like you have to know what your finances look like. And once you get that piece out of the way, you'll find that it's A, not as like daunting and overwhelming and scary as you think. And B, it actually gives you more um, peace of mind and empowerment because you're like, all right, this is what I can work with. And now we're going to craft a plan to work within that amount. Um, so always talk with a lender and then also don't go up to the max that the lender approves you for, because I feel <laughs> like they're, you know, everyone, you just have to be aware of your own budget. Like, you know, in the mortgage world, you may be able to pay X amount according to the mortgage world, but they don't know your day to day, like you in don't want to eat ramen your... noodles in your nice house. every Exactly. Night, you, know? you don't yep. want to be house poor. You need to buy new furniture and maintenance and all of that. So, you know, it's tempting and it's always nice to have a buffer for sure, but just really pay attention to like what your budget is and what you're comfortable with. Cause you don't want to be, you know, sick to your stomach once you close on the house and you're like, now I have to pay for this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big believer in that. I, I always encourage my clients to give me the budget. I, you know, yes. we start with right. a monthly payment that you're comfortable with or, a certain price range, but I'm never going to, I don't ever want to push them beyond a number that they've given to me. Yes. That's a really good point. It's kind of like reverse backing into it. Like, what do you want to pay instead of like, here's what you might be able to What's pay. What's the most I can be approved for? Well, where exactly. do you want to start? We have to start somewhere and we can kind of <laughs> exactly. see how it works and get a feel. I feel like I might have asked you that question though. <laughs> 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 how high can I go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, while we're giving advice out, if there's any new real estate agents out there that are paying attention and watching us, what advice would you have for them? Um, get a mentor. Honestly, it doesn't necessarily have to be my scenario where you're like someone's apprentice for a year, but having a mentor will give you a lifeline when you feel like you're kind of flailing at first because, you know, you take the test, you get your license, you join a brokerage, but again, you get out what you put into it. So just because you have the umbrella of the brokerage doesn't mean that they're going to carry you through. Like no one picks you up and says, okay, let's go, let's do this. Like that's all you. So it's on you to sign up for the trainings. It's on you to go into the office. It's on you to talk to the, you know, top producing agents. So when I first started out on my own, I would go into the office or I would figure out like who were the top producers and I would reach out to them and just be like, Hey, like, how can I help you? You know, do you need help with uh, a listing? Do you need help with an open house? Do you need me to deliver a lockbox or a sign writer? You know, like most agents at a certain level don't have time to do that anymore and would love for you to help. And if you just show that initiative and show that you're, you know, sharp and hungry and all of that, then the opportunities will come and you'll have someone there who is able to guide you through stuff that, you know, you may not know who to turn to otherwise. Yeah, that's good. I was going to ask how, how, you know, any advice on how to find a good one, but that's, that's exactly it right there being in the mm -hmm. office and trying to, trying to, you know, see what they're doing and who's busy and who's not. And yeah. Asking, it. yeah. Asking them to go to coffee, like, you know, just picking their brain and, um, you know, just getting in front of them really helps. Um, so you said when you first got started, you're, you're talking about you know, trying to get busy and, and uh, meeting with the, the top agents. Do you remember your first transaction you ever had? Yeah, I had to look it up. Um, and it's <laughs> funny because I didn't realize, but my first closed uh, transaction, not including rentals, was a million dollar deal. Um, <laughs> and ironically, That's that so came, I know, I, I, you would think I would remember that. Coming right, out the but, gates hot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was a lead from a mentor of mine, like someone who I identified in my office and she kind of, I guess, saw potential in me and I really, you know, was proactive with her and she would, you know, kind of bring me along and let me help out, let me host brokers opens. And she had all of the like million dollar luxury listings. <laughs> and so I kind of got exposed to that pretty early on. Um, and then this opportunity came up and I think she was maybe out of town or just didn't have the time. And she was like, I think you can handle this. Like, I trust you. And 
that was amazing. I mean, to have, she was one of the like game changing people in my career because to have somebody who sees the potential in you and trusts you to handle not only a deal, but a million dollar deal. Yeah. Um, that was pretty, you know, I owe a lot to her. So that was my first transaction was a million dollar deal. Um, and I, you know, she was there to help me kind of in the background. Um, so I just jumped in head first. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's just, you know, just reiterating the point that you said, you said of finding a mentor, you know, all of, everything that you're saying built on top of each other and it's showing. With yeah. Proof. That's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what about as far as like cool houses or fancy houses or impressive properties? Is there one that sticks out in your mind that you've been in over the years? I was trying to remember this too. And I think I've just seen too many, sadly. <laughs> I'm sure that if I really That's a like common me, answer. Okay, good. <laughs> so many houses, it's hard to find something. Yeah, that's like so I'm cool sure if I out. like made and made note of it, then I would remember. But no, I don't remember like one that stands out. But I will say, um, the houses in general that I think are the coolest to go through and to work with are the historic homes that my investors will flip. Um, I, just, I love history. And I think these historic homes are so incredible, like the detail and just the different way that they're constructed. Um, that to me is like that's the most fun type of house for me to show is like a historic home because I think they're so unique and they almost and like different. tell a story with their, yes, with their, their yes. characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. So really any historic home I, I think is pretty cool. Awesome. Awesome. What, um, if you had to pick a theme song for you, like an entrance song, if you're, you know, you're coming out, the music starts, the music cues, and you're going to run out. What is your entrance song? Well, obviously it's Enter Sandman. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> does every hokey does every hokey that you interview say that? Um, I interviewed Jason Lawless and he said that, obviously. Okay. You know, we were, we were <laughs> well, he actually him. did run He's, on exactly, the field yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> But yeah, that would be, you know, if I had to pick a hype song today, I feel like that would fit the bill. Right on right on key. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, outside of real estate, what do you do for fun? So, well, relax. I mean, anytime that I'm not working, that's like my number, like how quickly can I get to the couch and just sit down and relax? Um, but I have a four-year-old son and a hundred pound dog. So they <laughs> love to be active. So most of my downtime is spent with them, but we recently moved to Western Loudoun. So it's actually been really fun to explore with them all of the new and different areas of Western Loudoun. Like there's just so much to do out here, like trails and, you know, farmers markets and wineries and local grocery stores. And there's just so much to do. And I love bringing like my dog can only come to some of the things, but I yeah. love bringing my little guy along and just having him explore with me. Um, so that's what we've really been doing in our free time lately is just kind of like exploring our new area. That's awesome. I know he loves that tree slide you guys have too. Yes, the place that and the tree house, like he's <laughs> got it made back there. <laughs> All right. And then last but not least, where can we find you? You know, everybody that's that's learned about you today, where can they come to see more about you and keep up with you? Yes. So I am on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, my Facebook is just Palmer Harned Realtor. And my Instagram is Loudoun County Living with an underscore at the end. Um, and then website is just palmerharned.com and email is palmer at palmerharned.com. You got it made. All the custom yeah. stuff. <laughs> All the domain. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Well, thanks yeah. again for joining us today. It's a pleasure to hear more about you and uh, wish you success in the rest of the year. Thanks for having me. Have a great weekend. You too.